Hello everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivorian Spice back at it again with another pay-per-view WWE event reaction, guys. And this one, it is the hell in a cell, baby. Hell in a cell. The hell in a cell pay-per-view that y'all been waiting for, thinking, I very respect, when are you going to give us another WWE reaction? Can you just give us something weekly? But no, I keep it exclusive. I keep it like this. But what an event it was. It was a decent event. I can't just say what an event it was because WWE, can you explain me this? And I know you guys probably thinking the same thing. The event is called Hell in a Cell. For God's sake, can all the matches be a Hell in a Cell match? Sell it as it is, as the name says it right there. J just, just right there, Hell in a freaking Cell, man. Hell in a Cell. And to be honest with you, having one match that was just Hell in a Cell wasn't good enough for me. I truly believe if you're going to name an event Hell in a Cell, let it all, ma all the matches be a Hell in a Cell match to live up to the name of the event. Same as Elimination Chambers, all matches should be Elimination Chambers. And if there, if there is a match outside the Hell in a Cell, let it be a, not just a, a pinfall, a single pinfall. Let it be something. Steel Cage. Let it be, again, there were other there were other matches that had stipulations, which I really appreciated, but it should have all been a Hell in a Cell match. For those who are new to this channel, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, because I'm going to go through with you all the matches that took place from your from your girl Bianca Belair, your boy Bobby Lashley, and of course Cody Rose and Seth Rollins, Asuka, Ezekiel, Kevin Owens, Mad Cop, Mad Cat Moss, and also Byron Corbin. Let's start off with the first match, which was Bianca Belair versus Asuka. Of course, because not all of us are ready for Asuka and Becky, big time Lynch. Yes, for the Raw Women's Championship, guys. Bianca Belair, hats up to her. She is the toughest, the roughest, the smartest, you know, the greatest, you know. You get me? She is the best in her class, in her trade, in the division. She is one of the best. She's the greatest. And I'm a huge fan of Bianca Belair. Big ups to her as well. She makes things all possible for women. I'm a big fan. But that match itself... That triple threat match where it, 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 it was there was no champion's advantage, you know. When you go into a triple threat match as a champion, you can lose to anyone. You don't even have to be pinned to lose. So for Bianca Belair to come through that match, hats off to her. The match itself was good, of course. There were so many things that happened. Oscar, unfortunately, I'm so sorry, Oscar, that you was technically irrelevant in that match. It was all about Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair. And for Bianca Bella, Becky Lynch, I'm sorry that you tried to win. And your girl, Bianca Bella, picked up the scraps, dashed you out the ring, and pinned Oscar. One, two, three. I know Becky Lynch was so pissed. She was pissed. She was fuming. She was like, what the fuck, Bianca? Why are you do that to me? But Bianca was playing the same game that Becky Lynch did. Because Becky Lynch tried to steal a win during the match. You know, throwing Bianca off the off the, off the over the rope to pin Oscar. Unfortunately, she got her own what's it called, her own taste back. You know, if we're gonna say, you know, the, her, her own rotten sour taste got flamed back into her, and Becky Lynch lost that. She got flinged out the ring by Bianca Belair. Brilliant match, good opening, which led to the next one: Bobby Lashley versus Omos in MVP in the handicap match. Bobby Lashley and Omos have been going back to back, you know, from WrestleMania to WrestleMania backlash, all the way to Hell in a Cell, because MVP is jealous the fact that Bobby Lashley went to WrestleMania and won his match without him and probably said that, I don't need you, MVP. You know, you ain't the MVP. You're not the most, the most valuable player here. It is me, Bobby Lashley, you know. You get me? Bobby Lashley, the almighty Bobby Lashley. In that match as well, you saw MVP only tagged himself in when Bobby Lashley was on the ground. And 
down and out so he can just pound him some more you know taking advantage as well and i just don't like that guys when people take advantage when you're down but what did bobby lashley do he got right back up and of course fought his way through so funny that um cedric aka cedric alexander said the entertainer wanna be because he is an entertainer in the wwe you know he's not taken serious cedric came out of nowhere and i thought at first he came to of course attack bobby lashley from the top prop he jumped straight into almost almost grabbed him flang him out then when there from that distraction bobby lashley with the spear the spear the gore whatever you want to call it you get me whatever you want to call it guys with that crushing spear to almost his chest ribs and everything putting the big guy down the goliath the gigantic almost to pin him one two three some will say that cedric alexander whatever his name is the entertainer was there to help bobby lashing and you saw it in the cut scenes after keep your heads out can look after your own cedric you know if you if, if anyhow you ever ever come and interrupt my my matches my hands are gonna be all over you but in a friendly way bobby lashley won that match i was pleased with that he as well i think after the match he was celebrating with the fans he's signaling to the to the to wwe championship undisputed champion as well roman reigns you better be careful big fella because roman reigns is my guy and i ain't gonna have that at all you can't come out of nowhere and start challenging roman reigns no not the head of the table you know not the one not the one no not the one man because we the ones bro you can't come out here you the twos and we the ones guys after that kevin owen versus ezekiel aka elias's younger brother and as we are in the wwe world ezekiel is elias's younger brother although he looks a spitting image as him and you're thinking like at first i thought elias is that you i thought the exact same thing as kevin owen but kevin owen you were deluded my friend that is ezekiel and that game i mean that match itself was a good fight good fight ezekiel showed his strengths but yes kevin owen for once needs to get his way you know because he's been frustrated with people not believing in call him a lion etc for once kevin owen did himself proud with a two super kicks and a cannonball and then a stunner a stone cold stunner to ezekiel for the one two three pinfall kevin owen can sleep well tonight he can sleep good going into monday night raw and say that i told you it's a lie. but it's ezekiel for all i can see i see ezekiel Kevin Owen, you see Elias, but I see Ezekiel. I don't know what you guys think about that, but I'm seeing Ezekiel, Elias' younger brother. Simple as. Next fight. Liv Morgan, AJ Styles, Finn Balor versus Judgment Day. And Judgment Day, boy, oh boy, they've been bringing judgment to those three. You was thinking this would be a pay-per-view where the Judgment Day lose. Oh, hey! No, they did not lose. They showed exactly what they made of. They've come to cause judgment and havoc and chaos to those three. And eventually it did happen with Edge. Brilliant play. Brilliant play. But brilliant play as well from, from Judgment Day. You know, distracting AJ Styles and all that stuff on the ropes, beating them down and all that kind of stuff. With Edge out of nowhere with the novel spear to Finn Balor. Finn Balor getting pinned with one, two, three for Judgment Day to win. Judgment Day, big up to you guys because you really make this place all dark and scary. You know, I love the dark side of characters in the WWE. I love heel characters as well, and I do love the face, but the bad guys are always interesting. The good guys are boring at times. I'm not going to lie to you. That's why I'm dressed in black. Because I'm about the dark side out here, you know, but trying to make it to heaven because I'm all about the heaven thing, not the hell thing. You get me, guys? Back to another match Mad Cat Moss versus Happy Corbin. A beef that stewed up after Mad Cat won um, Andre the Giant Memorial, and then all of a sudden, Happy Corbin stopped finding him funny. Mad Cat was dropping some dead bars, dead jokes for a while, you know. He, he, most of Mad Cat's jokes were never funny, you know. It was only funny to Happy Corbin because it wasn't at him. That beast stood up for a very long time. 
um, Happy Corbin attacking him two weeks ago on SmackDown and Madcap returning the favor. It was a brilliant build up to the match itself. The fight itself was good. Madcap, big up to my guy, Madcap, because he was moving. He, and he wasn't even capping when he said he was going to whoop the ass of Baron Corbin. Madcap with no cap, sorting my man out, you know. Can you imagine there's still steps, guys, using the still step, giving Kevin, I mean, Byron Corbin exactly what he gave him two weeks ago or three weeks ago that sent him to hospital. Taking that still step, slamming it onto the still chair that was wrapped around Byron Corbin's neck. And I hope, Byron Corbin, your neck is broken because it seems like his neck is broken right now. Byron Corbin was choking. He needed assistant, medical assistant, and help. Mad Cat won that game. I mean, won that fight, won that match. Pleased with himself. I was pleased with him as well. Next, second main event, Austin Fury, the blue chip. You know, Mr. McMahon's right-hand man, you know. Mr. McMahon's hand boy, hand towel, whatever you want to call it. Left hand, right hand, whatever. His bum cheek, that's what. Austin Fury is against Mustafa Ali for the United States Championship. And guess who won? It was by no surprise that Austin Fury won. Because I don't see Austin Fury losing that title for a while since his uh, Vince McMahon's toilet paper to get me to wipe his ass. So he's because he's out here licking his ass. Main event, Cody Rhodes. Seth freaking Rowling. Oh, what a match. A Hell in a Cell match. The one that lived up to the pay-per-view's name. Hell in a Cell. In a Hell in a Cell. And boy, oh boy, did I enjoy that fight. To see Cody Rose come out and show his gruesome injury from his chest to his bicep. The, the bruises. God, give it up to you, man. Big ups to to Cody Rhodes. Whether the makeup artist was very good at building the story and doing the bruises, because I'm in the WWE universe and I'm talking to you, the WWE universe, it was real to me, you know. Whenever I watch this stuff, I put my mindset, I'm a child again, and I'm believing everything that I'm seeing, you know. Because I will tell you right now, let me see you get put through a table and see if it doesn't hurt. You get me? Let me see you get body slammed onto the mat and you tell me whether that's fake or not. Let me tell me if it doesn't hurt. Tell me if it doesn't hurt because I wouldn't want it. No, 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 I'm not down. As much as we can say, wrestling is fake. None of us are down to get body slammed through the table. Get me, get thrown onto the top of the steel cage, hell in a cell, through a table. None of us are down for that. We don't want that because we know it hurts. It really hurts. They are professional stop mats, but it hurts. But back to Cody Rhodes versus Seth freaking Rollins. Seth playing the game, coming out, dressed in the attire of Cody Rhodes' father as well. The American dream. What a disrespect it was. And I know he played mind games. There was belts that was unleashed. There was tables that was unleashed in the head in the cell. There was stunners. I mean, there was, there was pedigrees. There was stumps. There was crossroads like 500 times. My God, what a fight it was. There was even sledgehammers. Cody Rose with the fabulous win, with a fabulous match, with three crossroads, back to back to back, with a sledgehammer to Seth Rollins' face, knocking him out clean to pin him one, two, three, and getting that third win over Seth freaking Rollins. And Seth stood outside in the ring, pissed off again, saying, Why? 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 Yes, you, Seth. It is always going to be wide, guys. It is always going to be. And what an event it was towards the end. Just a shame that I think this pay-per-view wasn't one of the best. It was a decent one. But, guys, that's for me to, to know. And you, um, for, that's for me to know exactly that it wasn't good enough. But for me to find out that you of your thoughts of what you guys thought of the, of the, of the pay-per-view. What did you guys think of the Seth Rollins and Cody Rose match? And also... Fury, back up Moss's win. Did you enjoy that? Or did you join Judgment Day? Bobby Lashley, as well. Where do we, do we go with Bobby Lashley? Will he be challenging for the Universal Undisputed title? 
heavyweight title. We shall see. And what's next for Bianca Belair? Will it be her versus Becky Lynch again, guys? But guys, let me you let me know what your thoughts are on, on the pay-per-view with Helena Cell. As always, remember to subscribe to Red United TV and remember to keep it ready, keep it united. And also keep it red united and follow the socials. Your boy is out. We will see you for the next one. Peace. Yeah.